Good evening everyone, um, how are you? Um, welcome to Casual Thursday, it's a bit different today, um, haven't got the, the altar set up behind me, um, things are uh, already in church for the, the weekend, um, uh, but nevertheless it's a chance to have a stop uh, this evening and, uh, uh, and, and talk about the, the scriptures, yes, Casual Thursday, there we are, that's it's missing, it's all gone there. I'm very green today, I know, I look like some Robin Hood or something like that, never mind, it's about as close as it gets. Um, good to be able to sit here and uh, talk through um, our Gospel of the Week. Let's just pause then uh, as we begin and place this little bit of time between, uh, between us over the internet in the hands of God our Father. In the name of the Father, Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to take them into our heart. Let us firstly acknowledge those times we have fallen away from Christ Jesus through our thoughts, words and actions. You were born from the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ you died on the cross to heal the wounds of sin. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord you rose from the dead to open for us the gates of heaven, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let's pray. For God, strengthen those who hope in you, who graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, and in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. So, the Gospel for this uh, Sunday. Um, green Sunday. There we are. I'm green. There we are. So, it'll be a ordinary Sunday. First time uh, top on for some time. Here we go. Uh, in the sheets which you've either had sent to you or they're on the uh, the website um, Mark chapter 4 26 to 34 it's, uh, not quite as clear on this camera but as I say, got to be a different camera up here uh, let's see if we can change it for next time uh, or if you are using the Bible eight, page 815 of the ones that we use the NRSV let's read through it and see what we've got Jesus also said, The kingdom of heaven is if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full of grain of the, in the head. And when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with the sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, What can... With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Well, there we go. That's a bit different, isn't it? Um, wow, this is a uh, this is ordinary Sunday, in, uh, ordinary week in its full glory. Um, all the topics of uh, resurrection, ascension, and, and Pentecost, and Trinity, and uh, and the, the, the body of Christ. All that. Here we are. We're we're now back into to the good old teachings of Jesus. Good old teachings of Jesus. A um, bit of a theme going on today. So firstly, how did you feel? Uh, when you read that through, or when you heard it there for the first time, how do you feel? Does it just, does it, sort of, does, does it make you curious? Does it remind you of anything? Is it familiar? Um, can you get it? Not. These are all the questions which actually the teachings of, in the Gospels are about. Uh, they're all to get you thinking. Jesus doesn't want automatons for disciples. He wants thinking, breathing, and growing disciples. That's hopefully what we are. So I wonder, 
what do you think? Well, I would say it's a bit interesting because I've been out in the garden the last few days, um, watering like crazy, and then last night it rained. So what was the point? <laughs> Trying to get the uh, the veg patch to grow. Um, so maybe for me this has got something. Uh, a uh, bit, bit of a ring about it, bit of a ring about it. That's just my point of view. Anyway, how are we going to, how are we got going to undo this? He says we use our six W's, um, the six W's of discovery. Who is in it? Where is it happening? When is it taking place in the gospel story? What is happening verse by verse? Why is the gospel writer including this passage? And wherefore? What's it got to do with us? Now that will be beneath you just there. You'll be able to see those six W's. They're not hard and fast, but they certainly get us through and into the uh, the passage. Otherwise, we just look at it and go, uh. So, who have we got in it? Well, to give you a bit of a clue who was speaking, um, it was it Jesus? But it actually says he also said, if you read at the very beginning of 26, but we can work that out by looking at where and when. So, we do have Jesus talking about this. Uh, let's work through. Have we got anything else? We've got seeds, we've got earth, um, harvest. Kingdom of God, we don't have any people uh, in it, uh, but right at the end he says um, he spoke many parables to them um, uh, and explained everything to his disciples. Remember what disciples are? Followers, that's right. Followers. Um, there's crowds, curious, followers, disciples, the chosen ones, the apostles who uh, <coughs> sort of guide us on our way. So, um, not many characters in this in this particular passage. But I suppose it's really Jesus in the way he says talking to us. So you're the other character. Well done. So uh, where is it happening? Well, can I do that one by actually getting out of the Bible and having a good old dig around um, and see what have we got? So where and when I think are probably the two questions. These certainly we need when we're re um, revisiting a gospel for the first time in a while. We need to look where and when is it happening? So where is it happening? Oh, he's been to Simon's house. He's got Galilee. Galilee. He's around the Sea of Galilee. He's around the Sea of Galilee. Uh, moving on with the Hand Synagogue. Um, he's around. Keep going. I'm fine. Uh, keep going. They came home. So back in Galilee, Nazareth. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Looking that, working out. I'm trying to find a geographic thing. Um, we are his mother, brother, so we've been to Nazareth, uh, the sea, I'm working my way literally through, page by page, uh, to get there, and we look to be, I would say, somewhere near Nazareth, around the Sea of Galilee. So, okay, I've worked it out, we're up north, we're up north in, in Israel, uh, we're out in the countryside, we are in, in, in the rural parts of uh, the Holy Lands. Um, Maybe that's why it's powerful. Ah, oh, there we are, I see. Uh, in the world parts of so when is it taking place? Yes, chapter 4. No, it's taking place, let's see now, uh, in, in Mark's Gospel. Remind ourselves, Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel starts with John the Baptist. Jesus appears, gets baptised, goes around um, uh, healing, calling together the disciples, and starts preaching on, the, on his first great preaching tour of the north. So that's when it's happening. It's in the very early part of his ministry first few weeks maybe we don't know let's face it this is not a, an accurate week by week month by month description of what he's doing but certainly in the picture of mark's gospel this is the beginning of his preaching tour it starts to move out when things are going swimmingly they're going really well when people are turning to him and are curious so that's when and where uh, where and when even where and when when and where well, where and when we'll have that so what's happening let's go through this verse by verse. Jesus said to these people that are following him around, the crowds the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground. Okay we're up north, we're in the, we're in the, in, in the rural areas. This is common stuff um, we don't have many investment bankers we don't have any technicians, we don't have any they're nearly all people of the land or the sea um, so we're in the farming communities or fishing communities here. So, um, so remember, he talks about shepherds, of course, and sheep, doesn't he? So sheep, arable, fish. Here we go. We know what's going on up there. So he immediately starts off this parable 
but something they'll go yep we know that Jesus that is really quite normal to us and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow and he does not know how well if you've ever done that you can stare at a plant as long as you want and you won't watch it grow um, it, you will be asleep you will, you'll give up but if you keep returning day by day you find it larger and larger and larger and, and to be honest I know he's talking to these people in the first century the beginning of the first century now um, and for them the cell structure and all of that stuff is all something that, that's, that is yet to be discovered uh, a millennia later or millennia later um, they certainly know what happens you put it in the ground and you give it the right conditions and it grows uh, even though I know the cell structure still even you and I know how things work germination all those things it is still quite extraordinary how these things work but of course he's talking about seed isn't he now what why is he going on about this so first we've got this idea that the seed grows without anybody no, no, it just happens it just happens the earth produces of itself first the stalk then the head and then the full grain in the head so now he's talking to the farming community he's talking about the useful plant the useful seeds the ones uh, which bring something more nutrition the earth produces of itself first the stalk then the head and the full grain of the now this idea that the growth comes from somewhere else the earth it comes from a gift where the, the whole world is a gift the universe and creation is a gift and out of that gift come many things you and I but also what we are given the gift of food the gift of the growth of the earth so it's a very rich picture and it's a rich picture of sustenance and sustaining back and forth of us being part of this uh, important cycle of uh, of uh, God's creation um, then the grain and the head that is the wheat and when the grain is uh, ripe at once he goes this man goes with his sickle because the harvest has come now okay that's all pretty standard stuff it's all inspiring think about it fresh wow amazing mankind fits in with this growth but he starts off that bit, doesn't he, in verse 26, going, the kingdom of God is as if. So he's taking a very familiar picture, something we know, and he's applying that picture to something that maybe we don't know. What is the kingdom of God? You know, there's often a temptation, isn't there, to think that we are the builders of the kingdom get out there and build the kingdom no I would like to venture no we discern and we help in the building of the kingdom we do not create the kingdom that Jesus is the one he has come into the world he has come into the creation he has come here as the seed as the gift is scattered and so the seed is often seen as the word or is given is the knowledge and it's scattered into the soil we'll hear about this in other ones later we know about the the, the, the power, power of the good the, the, the sower the good seed uh, growing the, the good seed growing up good soil and the, the weeds and all that it's another one it is scattered on the ground that this has been given freely that the knowledge of God's love and through Christ our redemption is given freely the kingdom of God is a description of the whole effects of God's love both as they begin to take effect now and when they come to their fruition at the end the kingdom of God is work in progress it's not fixed now it is working so um, <laughs> When the grain is ripe, but once it goes in with a sickle. Now, oh dear, now let's look at that. So everything's going really well with the kingdom of God, but it comes in with a sickle. Because the harvest has come. There is always in the Gospels this certain little thing about 
um, the, this, this, the, the judgment, the end. It sits behind all the Gospels, doesn't it? It says Jesus hasn't come just to be nice and get the world back on track. It is getting, it has begun us on the journey towards our conclusion, which is beyond this world. This is big stuff, isn't it? And it's only ordinary Sunday. This this parable is here about something much more significant. It is about the growth of the knowledge with us and through us to a conclusion, to a point. Now, if you go back to the, the farming stuff, you know that you bring in the grain and you produce something new. You produce the bread, you produce the flour, you put well, the flour, then the bread, and then the cakes, and then the the cupcakes and then the chocolate gattos, you know, all that stuff grows from that moment of the harvest. So there's real richness here that something is going to grow. And it says you can't see it. I mean, often I think, is Jesus saying, you know, maybe he's saying maybe, I've got to say maybe because I can't uh, speak exactly on his behalf, uh, I can't speak anywhere near his behalf, I do my best. Maybe, as I see it, maybe, the question is that this idea that the growth is so slow, is of course it hasn't happened in the way that we expect, that we think. Sometimes we think we know the way the kingdom should grow, and where it should grow, and how we should affect it, but it doesn't. It can grow in the places you don't expect. The knowledge of Jesus, the coming to Jesus, can happen amongst those that we don't expect it to. Very interesting. It is a little open-ended, I have to admit, that parable. A little open-ended. But certainly, from the main picture, we can start to think a little bit. Where do we fit within that? How do we feel we fit within that? Okay, verse 30, the next bit. Jesus also said, uh, what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? Good question. Okay, well, it follows on very nicely from the f previous part. So what's the power of the kingdom of God? How are we going to describe the kingdom of God? Okay, it's like this he says as well. It's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it was sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so the birds of the air can make the nest in its shade. I didn't need to pick that down, pick that apart really, or take that apart. That is a description of something which we know. Um, if you plant a mustard seed, and I don't mean the little ones in the crest pots that we do, in mustard pots and like we do did at school, but if you put a mustard seed in the ground, in a pot, nurture it, it will grow. And certainly the mustard seeds we're talking about here, they're very good at drying in quite dry, uh, arid land landscapes. Um, and they are pretty tough, pretty tough. They're hot to avoid being eaten. <laughs> They're pretty tough. And they are tiny. And almost found funny one from the previous parable there with this slow growth thing. We're now talking about what may seem impossible. And that it will grow into that which is beyond possible. And I love it, you know, it's a huge shrubs, even the birds make their nests in them. That's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, I mean you've only got to sort of walk outside, look at trees and stuff, and just see how small the seed of a tree can be, and see how colossal. I mean, here in St Bartholomew, you've got that massive cedar tree and the massive oak trees. Um, they started from something that big. But it takes time, and it becomes part and I like that. The, the idea that the, fact the birds take that nest in it. It's almost like that the kingdom of God is part of, of God's creation. It's part of something bigger. And it becomes almost like the central um, part, uh, um, um, branches that hold the, the, the world together. I love it. Um, you, you go to... Uh, you often see a picture of a tree being used, the tree of life and so forth. And in there's various branches, it's, it's a bit of a pagan symbolism actually, you know, that you've got all of the, uh, uh, the, the different parts of nature within the tree. And the tree is the thing that draws up the sap and the energy from the ground and then produces something more. This is 
very similar. This is a great understanding. This is an ancient understanding and maybe a contemporary picture that we, under, that we see now. That the kingdom of God will draw from everything and from the unlikeliest place will become something extraordinary. Remember, if only one person died on that, um, um, to, sorry, let's get this, uh, to that again. It was that one person, Jesus, who died on Good Friday, along with others, sorry, I better point that one in. No offence, lads. Uh, but that one person on that particular day was the one that transformed everything. With the Creator, in Jesus transformed life it transformed life and now from this world we grow into something more because of one now I don't know how many billions of people have existed in this in, in on our planet there's 70 billion now or whatever it is now I don't know how many have existed over time but it took one to start the new growth and that picture of the Jack and the Beanstalk the Beanstalk growing so high it reached into the clouds into the heavens almost it took one to create that new that new kingdom just one person ok that's kingdom of God have we got it? Oh, maybe yes or no I don't know we kind of got some stuff so we are going to hear more. We read, read on. Verse 33. With many such parables. Oh, with many. What are they? We haven't got them. Oh, why can't you tell us? We have a few later on, but why didn't he tell Why haven't the rest hung on? They've forgotten them, haven't they? They've forgotten them. These ones stick out, but they've forgotten the rest. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them. The word. Very early Christian thing, that. The word. That's the description of... The, of, of uh, what Christ t teaches and what Christ has done. The gospel is the word. So a very early church there, understanding of this one. So with many such parables, he spoke the word to them. I'm shaking my pen now, getting excited. And as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables. I like that. It's just as well. Because if he'd have spoken about contemporary um, life in, in, in the Holy Lands at that moment, we wouldn't get it. The parables pass through time and they pass across geography and they pass through cultures. These teachings were not just for the people in Galilee. They are there to reach out to us. And when I'm next in my garden, watering my courgettes and whatever else I've got in there in the vegetable patch and I'm watching them to see whether they've grown a bit, it's going to come into my mind, isn't it? He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything to him private to his disciples. And that is a curious last line. Because that almost says it's an introduction as to where the church sits within the kingdom. I have to say, sometimes we as the church, we think we're the kingdom. We're not the kingdom. We are part of his kingdom. Our role there is it seems to be alluded to there, but he explained everything to his private to his disciples. It's almost like the church has got a great commission to try and reveal these teachings, reveal the kingdom, to try and help people understand the kingdom. Our job, following on the disciples, our um, disciples we ourselves, followers, is to try and help people go, Whoa, that's interesting. I want to find out more. Am I part of that growing kingdom? The church is there to help people find out that they are in the kingdom. All that from two little stories and a little footnote. So, why is the Gospel writer including this? Well, certainly we are here at the beginning of the gospel we are here in, in, in the gospel at the beginning of his great preaching tour around Galilee we are throwing in all the stuff which later on we will ruminate over and think about and digest and discuss 
and be inspired by. The writer wants us to know that there is something growing, there's something happening here, that the gospel is going to take us to a moment when things will flourish. So wherefore, the last W underneath you, the last W, what's it got to do with us? Wherefore, what's it got to do with us? Do you wonder? Do we wonder? Are we part of that growing plant? Are we one of the seeds that's planted? Are we allowing people to see the beauty of the kingdom? Or are we crushing it underfoot? How do we fit in with God's plan? Are we happy and confident with it, or do we fear it? Are we truly members of the kingdom? We are members of the kingdom. And does that make our lives feel deeper and closer with God? I can't answer that for you. It's for you to think about. It is for you to maybe put the kettle on now, have a little ponder, go outside, walk the garden, try and see them growing. He's got you thinking. He's got me thinking. And he will keep us thinking until he comes in glory. So my brothers and sisters, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Take care, folks. Good night and God bless you. Catch you soon. Bye.